No, 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 man, you're not listening. I said to the guy, I said, listen, I really think that Bruce Kradkowski could have been a franchise quarterback for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I swear to God, that's what I said to him. And then, you know what I followed it up with? You know what I followed it up with? I said, I told the guy, I said to him, I said, you know, I liked Byron Lethwich before he was the offensive coordinator for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I liked him back when he was the Buccaneers starting quarterback for two games and didn't do anything, you know? So I, yeah told him, didn't I? James, I find your lack of faith in this project disturbing. Oh, hey man, how, how you been? Have you been good? I, I really, really hope you've been good, man. What, what, what have you been up to? Don't sugarcoat this situation, James. We both know it's been almost a year since the last episode of you reviewing the worst eras in Buccaneers history. How has your progress been in acquiring new people to review these errors with you? Yeah, man, about that. Okay, so listen, it's not like I haven't been trying to get people. Let's just say, hypothetically speaking, I just talked to maybe like two people about this in the past six months, maybe. Would that be a bad thing? Is that something I could maybe get, I don't know, punished for? Your efforts in this series is pathetic. Now as punishment, you will no longer have the benefit of having somebody else each episode to go through an era with you. You must now conquer this challenge alone, as you continue to review the worst eras in Buccaneers history. Oh god, do I really, really, do I really have to go through all these eras by myself now? Look man, I'm sorry I've been like away from this whole thing for like six months, my bad, whoopsie, but please, please don't make me go through this by myself. This burden is now yours alone, James. The next era you will review will be the Lehman Bennett era. Oh god, I have to talk about the Lehman Bennett era next. Uh, okay, uh, sure, man. Just don't hurt me. I don't want to be hurt, so fine. I'll, I'll do these by myself from now on, and yeah, I'll, I'll talk about the Lehman Bennett era, I guess. Very good, James. Do not disappoint me. I will continue checking in to see how your progress is going. Farewell. <sighs> well, uh, I guess I better go get ready then. Hey guys, what's going on? James here, and in this video, we are going to be talking about the Lehman Bennett era. And I'm sure Lehman Bennett is a very, very nice guy, but how do I put this simply? Well, he was a terrible head coach. The Lehman Bennett era lasted for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers from 1985 to 1986. Now, who is Lehman Bennett? Well, Lehman Bennett actually used to be the head coach for the Atlanta Falcons before joining the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He was with the Atlanta Falcons for six seasons. He was a two-time NFC coach of the year. So yeah, not a bad resume before joining the team. His final record with the Atlanta Falcons was 46 wins, 241 losses, and in his last three seasons with the Falcons, he actually finished with a top half offense and defense every single season. So pretty darn interesting, but in the end, the Atlanta Falcons did decide to move on from Lehman Bennett, and for two years in between his time after the Atlanta Falcons and before joining the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, he was selling used cars. So, you know, I talked about Hugh Culverhouse with Adam in the previous video, but that guy made some really weird decisions as owners because the Buccaneers straight up hired a used car salesman to be the head coach of an NFL franchise. Let's talk about year one with the Lehman Bennett era. It started in 1985. Their final record was two wins, 14 losses, a bottom half of the league in both offense and defense. That's not good under any circumstances. They scored only 294 points as a team, the second worst in the NFL, and they gave up 448 total points during that season for a difference of negative 154. Guys, I'm not an expert at math, but negative 154 point differential, yeah, that's not very good. 
Buccaneers were not without some excuses for this collapse happening. Uh, they had just lost Leroy Selman to a back injury that would eventually end his career. So yeah, losing a Hall of Famer is not going to be good for any team whatsoever. John McKay had just retired, which was unfortunate because he had actually, you know, started to pile up a nice couple of years there with the team before he decided to retire. And some of the other players that they had lost were actually players who were building up that culture and building up a lot of those good early years for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Guys like Richard Wood, Ricky Bell, Dewey Selman, Leroy Selman's brothers. So they lost both the Selman brothers, Mike Washington, Cedric Brown, and Cecil Johnson. So to say that this team lost a lot of their key talent on the defensive side of the ball is a little bit of an understatement. The draft really didn't do them any favors either. It included players like Ron Holmes, Irvin Randall, Donald Igwe Buike, who, by the way, is the uncle of former Buccaneers safety, Godwin Igwe Buike. I'm probably not saying that last name right, but you know what? I don't care. And I do want to make a note of this, and don't worry, we will get back to this. Fans wanted the backup quarterback to play, who we will mention him in a little bit, but Lehman Bennett said, nah, I'm good. Some of the more notable players from this first year of the Lehman Bennett era include quarterback Steve DeBerg, who had been the Buccaneers starting quarterback since 1984 when he was traded from the Broncos to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So he had already been there for a couple of years with John McKay. So you would figure, oh, maybe he's going to get things right. Yeah, no, that didn't necessarily happen. He started in 11 games, throwing 19 touchdowns and 18 interceptions, which, um, hmm, uh, not good. James Wilder was still the running back for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He was the second round draft pick in 1981. He had 1,300 rushing yards, 10 rushing touchdowns to go along with 53 receptions, 341 yards, but nine total fumbles. And that was kind of the thing for James Wilder is, yeah, he got a ton of yardage and a ton of touches, but man, that guy really did fumble the ball. Kevin House and Jimmy Giles were the star receivers for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Kevin House first being a second round draft pick in 1980. He had 44 receptions, 803 yards, and five total touchdowns. Jimmy Giles, longtime Buccaneer from the Houston Oilers, 43 receptions, 673 yards, and eight touchdowns. And hey, he made the Pro Bowl, which you know what? Hey, kudos to him. That's pretty darn good. On the defensive side of the ball, Jeremiah Castile, Buccaneers third round draft pick in 1983, finished this year with seven interceptions and two fumbles recovered. How did this team only win two games? David Greenwood, a rookie in 1985, traded from the Saints, had five interceptions and one fumble recovery. And David Logan, the Buccaneers' 12th round draft pick in 1979, finished the year with six and a half sacks and one fumble recovery. So overall, based on these notable players that I mentioned, you would figure the team might have won, say, I don't know, six games, maybe seven games. No, they went two and 14. Baffling. Simply just baffling. After a very interesting offseason, which don't worry, we'll get to it, uh, year two of the Lehman Bennett era had started, and their final record was 2-14. and 14. Yeah, they won the same amount of games in year two that they won in year one, and that wasn't necessarily a good thing. They were in the bottom half of the league yet again in both offense and defense. Their points scored total as a team was 239, the second worst in the NFL yet again, and they gave up 473 points this time around for a difference of negative 234. I did not actually think they could do worse in year two than they did in year one, but Lehman Bennett always finds a way to suck more. Steve DeBerg was benched this season after two games. James Wilder was given the ball way less in year two of the Lehman Bennett era. He had 365 attempts in 1985. He only had 190 in 1986. And do you guys remember Jimmy Giles and Kevin House? Those guys were pretty good receiving targets, right? Well, uh, no, they were released after game number seven of the season and they didn't get any playing time out of their number one overall pick in the NFL draft. And yeah, let's talk about that for a minute. The Buccaneers draft included number one overall pick, 
Bo Jackson, who did not play for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It, because to put it simply, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers lied to Bo Jackson. Bo Jackson asked the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Hey guys, is me visiting you going to affect my baseball status? The Buccaneers said, Nah man, you're good. And he went, and he visited, and then he couldn't play baseball. And he was so upset with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, he said, I'm not going to play for you if you draft me. And the Buccaneers said, Well, guess what, Bo? We're drafting you. And then Bo Jackson said, Okay, I'm not going to play for you. And that was it. And then the next year, he was taken by the Raiders. And the rest is history. Now, I could make an entire video talking about this, but you all know this hurts. It hurts a lot. That's why everybody hates the Lehman Bennett era. I mean, that and another reason I'm going to talk to you in a minute, but I can't even make a joke about this. This is just, just sad. Roderick Jones was another first-round draft pick for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Jackie Walker, second-round draft pick, as well as Kevin Murphy, second-round draft pick. If you guys don't know any of these names, I don't expect you to, by the way. And what do you think that says about how well these guys actually did for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Uh, I think it speaks volumes. Some of the notable players for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers from this year was, hey, that quarterback who the fans wanted the year before, the first year of the Lehman Pena era, the guy actually got his shot to play some games for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Who was that quarterback? Oh, it was just Steve freaking Young. Now, he was the backup quarterback in 1985. He started 14 games for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and he threw eight touchdowns as well as 13 interceptions and uh that sucks james wilder was back and oh boy you could tell his numbers were down maybe they should have given him the ball a little bit more 704 rushing yards two rushing touchdowns 43 receptions 326 yards and 10 total fumbles remember when i told you guys just a couple of minutes ago that james wilder really liked to fumble the ball yeah that did not stop him less touches did not stop him from fumbling the ball at all the man really really couldn't hold on to the ball sometimes gerald carter was the new number one wide receiver without kevin house why did they release him again he was a ninth round draft pick for the tampa bay buccaneers in 1980 he had 42 receptions 640 yards and two touchdowns hey not as good as kevin house maybe you shouldn't have released him and calvin mcgee was the backup tight end from the 1985 season he was the new number one tight end because jimmy giles was gone he had 42 receptions 640 yards and two touchdowns not terrible numbers in terms of his overall yardage, but his touchdowns were not comparable to Jimmy Giles. Again, why did they release Kevin House and Jimmy freaking Giles? Vito McKeever, an undrafted player from 1986, finished the year with three interceptions and one fumble recovery. Scott Brantley, a Buccaneers third round draft pick in 1980, had two interceptions and zero fumbles recovered. Keith Browner, Buccaneers second round draft pick in 1984, had four sacks, two fumble recoveries and an interception. And Chris Washington, a Buccaneers sixth round draft pick in 1984, had four sacks, two fumbles recovered and one interception. So just comparing the 1986 season to the 1985 season, yeah, didn't necessarily show much improvement, did they? And we all know the story of what happens with, you know, the Lehman Bennett era. Bo Jackson, he doesn't do anything. Steve Young, he doesn't do anything. Both those guys are just expunged from the team. And you know what? I think they go off to go do some pretty pretty darn good things but just to end this era off i leave you guys with this lehman bennett would show up to a press conference held at the end of the 1986 season by hugh culverhouse he did not know that this would be the press conference where hugh culverhouse would announce that lehman bennett would be fired effective immediately and after that lehman bennett would never coach as a head coach in the NFL ever again. So, you know, we're two eras in at this point, and Hugh Culverhouse is a freaking madman. Could you imagine if he was the owner of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers today?
But yeah, guys, that's pretty much all you can say about the Lehman Bennett era. It was freaking terrible. They basically wasted Bo Jackson by lying to him. I mean, that's kind of a Hugh Culverhouse thing, really. But, you know, Steve Young was wasted here in Tampa Bay. Kevin House was released here in Tampa Bay. Jimmy Giles was released here in Tampa Bay. The defense regressed impressively. It is impressive how bad they got from the first year of the Lehman Bennett era to the second year of the Lehman Bennett era. That's freaking phenomenal, okay? Their point differential got so much worse and it was just really really bad hugh culverhouse hired a used car salesman after he was out of the league for two years thought you know what this will be a good idea let's bring him in let's see what he can do and then he fired the guy effective immediately at a press conference no less without the guy even knowing it was going to happen that is like an insane flex and an insane power move I mean, yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. James Wilder, Steve Young, Bo Jackson, Kevin House, Jimmy Giles. Those guys were really, really good. John McKay invested a lot in those guys, and Lehman Bennett seemingly came in and just wasted all of them. Obviously not in the case of Steve Young and Bo Jackson, but, you know, guys like J James Wilder, Kevin House, Jimmy Giles, Steve DeBerg to a certain degree, Jeremiah Castile, David Greenwood, David Logan, all of these really good players who were, you know, arguably still going to be a relatively decent core for the Buccaneers post-John McKay era, it was all ruined in two years. That's really impressive. Uh, they released Kevin House, Jimmy Giles, who Jimmy Giles is in the freaking Buccaneers Ring of Honor right now. James Wilder, who will be in the Buccaneers Ring of Honor soon. Just how do you waste all of that talent in two years and manage to mess up two Hall of Famers coming to your team in Bo Jackson and Steve Young? That's, that's freaking incredible. So, yeah. That's the Lehman Bennett era, a used car salesman turned head coach for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who got fired when he didn't even know it was coming. Hugh Culverhouse is a freaking madman, but that's it for this video, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Mm, I forgot how bad it was talking about the Lehman Bennett era. That, wow, that wasn't good. That was not good at all. Only two years, and Bo Jackson will give me nightmares for the rest of my life. That's... that's almost impressive. Wow. Very good work on reviewing the Lehman Bennett era, James. How did it feel? Were you seething with rage and anger over the disappointment of this franchise? <sighs> you know... This one was actually way, way more frustrating than the first one you had me review. I still don't know who you are. I really don't, but this is starting to get under my skin a little bit, man. Good, James. You're finally starting to see that no matter what this team does, no matter who they hire, no matter which players they add, they will always be failures. You know what? You know what? It's fine. I'm, I'm gonna keep a positive attitude. I'm Mr. Positivity over here, man. You cannot break me, dude. So whatever. Keep on giving me these eras. That's fine. Do whatever you want to do. I'm going to be strong, and I'm gonna keep on fighting this, and you cannot put me down. Don't worry, James. Soon you will see the error of your ways and join me on the dark side. I will have your next era for you soon. Until then, farewell. Oh, jeez. All right. I got this.